Hey, everyone. I'm Dr. Adam McKee, and you're about to dive into an engaging exploration of substantive criminal law from my book, Criminal Justice, An Overview of the System. Today, we're breaking down some heavy-duty topics into bite-sized, easy-to-understand pieces. So let's get started. Substantive criminal law serves as the legal cornerstone that delineates specific behaviors deemed unacceptable by societal standards and enforced by governmental authority. At its core, it functions as an extensive rulebook, meticulously detailing actions considered violations against the community's moral and legal order. A quintessential example is the crime of murder, explicitly prohibited due to its severe violation of the most fundamental human right, the right to life. This segment of criminal law not only outlines the boundaries of lawful conduct but also prescribes the penalties associated with transgressions. By defining what constitutes a criminal act, such as taking another's life without lawful justification, substantive criminal law plays a pivotal role in guiding societal behavior. Have you ever thought about what keeps everything from turning into a free-for-all? That's where the rule of law steps in. It's a principle that keeps everyone playing by the same rules, including big shots in government. Thanks to the rule of law, laws are applied equally, keeping the game fair for everyone. Imagine a game where rules changed based on who you were, it wouldn't be fun, right? That's why the rule of law is crucial. Constitutional limits. Keeping power in check. Our constitution is not merely a relic of the past but a vibrant, living framework that delineates the boundaries within which laws must operate. It's designed to prevent the capricious creation and application of laws, ensuring that legislation is carefully considered and justly applied. Specifically, the Constitution expressly prohibits practices like bills of attainder and ex post facto laws. Such provisions guarantee that individuals are forewarned about what constitutes illegal behavior, thereby preventing retroactive penalization for actions that were legal at the time they were undertaken. This principle of fair notice is fundamental, as it demands that laws be drafted with clarity and precision, allowing every citizen to clearly understand what behaviors are permitted and what actions are punishable. First Amendment Limits on Criminal Law The liberties of speech, religion, and assembly are foundational to the American ethos of freedom, serving as its very pillars. Yet, an important nuance often overlooked is that these freedoms have inherent limitations to prevent harm. A prime example is the clear and present danger test, a legal standard preventing individuals from making statements that could incite immediate danger, such as falsely shouting, fire, in a crowded venue. This principle highlights the fact that not all forms of expression are safeguarded under the First Amendment. Speech intended to incite violence, known as fighting words, or expressions of hate that can provoke an immediate breach of peace, are not protected. This delicate balance underscores the essence of our democratic values, freedom must be exercised with a sense of responsibility towards the community. It's a testament to the complex interplay between individual rights and collective well-being, ensuring that while personal freedoms are upheld, they do not infringe upon the safety and rights of others. Second Amendment Limits on Criminal Law The Second Amendment is undoubtedly one of the most debated topics in American discourse. It enshrines the right to bear arms, a provision deeply rooted in the nation's history and values. However, this right is not without its regulations and limitations, as clarified by the Supreme Court. The Court acknowledges the right to carry firearms for self-defense yet emphasizes the necessity of regulatory measures such as background checks and waiting periods to ensure public safety. These regulations are designed to prevent firearms from falling into the wrong hands, balancing the right to self-defense with the collective need for security. Additionally, the extent of this right can vary significantly based on local and state laws, which may impose stricter controls on the types of firearms one can possess, as well as how they are carried and stored. This nuanced approach to the Second Amendment reflects a broader effort to reconcile individual freedoms with the responsibility to safeguard the community, ensuring that the exercise of one's rights does not come at the expense of others' safety and well-being. What do you think about these laws and limits? How do they impact your sense of freedom and responsibility in society? It's fascinating to see how our legal system balances individual rights with the greater good. Today, we've unpacked substantive criminal law and its critical role in shaping our society's boundaries. From the rule of law to the rights and limits set by the Constitution, these principles ensure justice and fairness remain at the heart of American democracy. Stay tuned for our next deep dive, where we'll explore another fascinating aspect of the criminal justice system. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the law's ins and outs. Let's keep the conversation going and the curiosity alive.
See you next time.